Last year at the start of the season, Vegas had this team at six and a half wins. And the Bears underperformed and, and wound up with a three-win season. Now, after all the off-season acquisitions and the, the draft trade and the draft picks and everything like that, Vegas now this year has this team at seven and a half wins. So they've only seen a one-win upgrade. And, you know, for all the fans out there projecting 10 or 11 wins, it, it's a hard argument to make because you're expecting them now to overachieve by, you know, three or four games. So, uh, you know, what uh, what's more of the realistic expectation here? I think you nailed it with uh, Vegas. Me and you go more on math and statistics and we go on Vegas, right? Vegas has been consistent for, for years and over time. And like you said, so if Vegas had the Bears at six and a half wins last year, and you would consider this team an underperforming team last year, and you have them at seven and a half wins this year, you're looking at a team that is mathematically just basically a one game better team. So if this is a team that underperforms, we are looking at a similar season to last year, like you said. So an underperforming team, one game better, we're a four win team, you know, that's that's gonna hurt. That's gonna be really painful. And uh, if, if you're an overperforming team and that's the argument you wanna make, um, one of my favorite commentators, Yurko, is always saying that this was a six or seven win team last year that only won three games. And while I love it and I agree, generally speaking, you know, you are what your record says you are. This year, if you are hoping to overperform, right? So if you're underperforming from last year, you're saying that it was a six and a half win team and it, they only won three games. Underperforming is three games? I don't think so. I think that's like a one or two game thing. So if you're overperforming, let's say you're seven and a half wins, you should be eight, nine wins. And everybody gets really excited about 10, 11, 12 wins and playoffs. Adam Rank and his 12 wins for the season is crazy, but um, I think realistic, we should, we should all go back to the medium of what we were expecting and we should go back to seven, eight wins. And that's a great season. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I saw that projection with the 12 wins that even blew my head. I mean, I just don't see how you get there. You know, um, injuries are always a part of the deal. At the end of the day, this team is just not as talented as people make it out to be. Um, you know, front to back, up and down, it, it is a team game. So as, as excited as we are for the offense making progress and things like that, we still have a ton to see from the defense in order to see if this team can actually compete in this league at a high level, you know. Um, takes a lot and with the way i don't know with the way this team is i think even if we did manage to squeak in the playoffs we would be you know a first round knockout i think if we're playing it feels like we're playing the fence and being the medium fans that just don't overhype but i think it's seven to eight wins and i think that's positive i think seven i'm gonna say seven wins and i think that's a good season but we've gone through every like defensive group and offensive group and we say is it an upgrade from last year right but defensive line clear upgrade over last year you had mike pinnell and armand watts starting in weeks two and three and we're talking about guys who are completely undrafted free agents or waiver wire pickup guys you know uh the defensive end situation is debatable but you added yannick and gakwe that's just i mean you had muhammad yeah aquadine muhammad was really bad and right. so um Defensive line, we're better. Linebackers, I think, across the board, we're clearly better. You know, Tremaine Edmonds in a system is, in this system, is arguably better than Roquan uh, Smith. In this system, Roquan, in a proper system, is clearly a top five linebacker, as we all knew because we loved Roquan, but he yeah, just... No. It was, a, it was a healthy leaving of the team where we just knew it wasn't long-term. Um, so linebackers across the board are better. Uh, Tremaine Edmonds is obviously an upgrade. Um, Jack Sanborn, instead of being your best linebacker, is now your third or fourth best. That's, a, that's an upgrade. And then the defensive backfield. Jaquan Brisker had a great season for a rookie, got hurt. Eddie Jackson was having a comeback season. Great, got hurt. And then, you know, Kyler Gordon gets to focus on his position. Tyreek Stevenson is looking really good. I, I really like Tyreek Stevenson. And then Jalen Johnson. So you are better on every level of defense. Not saying much, because your defense was probably 30th, 29th at best. So now if you're 20th, like you said, or maybe in the top 16, hopefully, top half of the league, that's a huge upgrade. And maybe that does put Justin Fields in position to have some more bombs and like we saw in the preseason, hopefully, you know, he 
he has a few 300 yard games whether that's a 50 yard screen I'll still take a 300 yard game the best quarterbacks in the league get those plays where their guy does most of the work 80 yards and you know Joe Burrow has 200 yards 250 and 80 of it came after the catch from Jamar Chase I mean that's that's great so on yeah, defense I, mean, I hope you're right I think it's I hope it's top half of the league at best at worst you can't be worse than you know the 24th 25th team in the league again this year how many 300 yard passing games does fields have 300 zero zero yeah i'll I'll be confident saying zero so yeah i would uh, take two i would take two to four this year yep me too yep just give me a little flash show me some steps forward you know what i mean and like you said that's going to come from you know one of the things we suffered from last year was yards after catch we were one I think of the it was one of the worst in the league, and one then, of the worst in the league. Yeah. yeah. So to come out this season as as critical as fans are to throw two touchdowns and two screen passes that both go house, um, that's actually very encouraging, for my opinion, because it's like you know you focus on one of your weaknesses. You got a guy like DJ Moore in here to come in and help fix your weaknesses, and look at that. It it looks like. You it know, shows it up might, pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, it might make some effect. So hopefully that pans out and that translates into a much better offense this year. Um, on offense, you know, if we're doing the same thought experiment, I think receiving core is clearly better. Um, hopefully with all your starters healthy on the offensive line, you're better. I think the running back position overall is probably the most questioned, right? Like, did you get better? Did you not? We don't know yet. You might have, but you might have gotten worse. And... Um, yeah, and then the tight end position got better. So, like you said, it, we're we're definitely on the upswing, but um, it's all it's kind of up in the air, and I think we'll we'll know it pretty quickly. I think this year the learning curves are less steep, and so if you're not doing well by week six and doing what you're intending to do by week six, like as an offense and as a defense, well then it's now you're missing talent, or now it's bad coaching. So the conversation stops being, hey, this is one of the worst teams in the league talent-wise, to, okay, now the talent's not that bad. Where's the problem now? So I want to do this schedule walkthrough with you. Uh, Packers, Bears, week one at home. Who do you have? I have the Bears. Bears. Week two, Bucks, Bears at Tampa. I have the Bears. Okay, 2-0. and oh. Bears, Chiefs at Arrowhead. I think that's the easiest. Chiefs. Yeah, that's the easiest Chiefs I've ever heard. Week four, Bears, Broncos at Soldier Field. That is the Bears. Three and one. Bears at Washington on a Thursday night. I have Washington. I agree. Three and two. Bears, Vikings at Soldier Field. I have the Vikings. Okay, three and three. Interesting. Bears, Raiders at Soldier Field. The Bears. Four and three. Bears at the Chargers. Chargers. Four and four. Bears at the Saints. At the Saints. Four and five. Panthers at Bears at Soldier. I have the Bears. Five and five. Bears at Detroit. I have Detroit. Five and six. Bears at the Vikings. I have the uh, the Bears. Sweeping the Vikings this year? No, the Vikings won the first one at home and we beat Oh, that's right, that's right. And we beat them on the road. Okay. So So six and and five. Six and six? Yep. Okay. The Lions at the Bears? Um... That's where I think the Bears get their seventh win. Seven and six. Seven and six. Bears at the Browns. Um, this one's the toss up for me. This is the one that I kind of go back and forth on. But um assuming Deshaun Watson is performing, I'm gonna go with the Browns. Seven and seven. Bears or sorry, Cardinals at the Bears. I'm gonna go Bears. Okay. So that's eight. Falcons at the Bears. At the Falcons. Eight and eight. And then Bears at Lambeau to close the season. I got the Packers. So realistically, that's how we get to eight and nine. Yep. I think that's a really fair assessment of the season. 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, you, you could swap some of those wins and losses here and there if you want to. You know, maybe maybe we do, you know, get swept by the Vikings, but we sweep the Packers. Maybe right. we do, you know, win against the Browns, but we wind up losing to, like, Arizona for some ungodly reason or something stupid. You know, th- those things sometimes happen throughout the league, especially with young teams. With young teams that are inexperienced, they'll lose some of those games that they're supposed to win. And you know what I mean? And then they will they might win some of the games they're supposed to lose. That's just kind of how it goes. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's more of a realistic tempered expectation. I, I think kind of if you saw, in my opinion, how this is going to go, we're, we're kind of going to be chasing this. It's going to be kind of like a ladder. We're going to be constantly chasing 500. Yeah. You know what I mean? Four, four and three, four and four, five. Like, kind of, I, I just feel like we're not really going to go on any kind of win streak here or losing streak here. I just don't see... You know, I don't have very many back-to-back wins or very many back-to-back losses. Um, yeah. I kind of just see the season as, you know, a little A good fun. uphill battle, yeah. Yeah. Patrick wants us to compare the Bears' strengths to the rest of the division. Okay. Um, where are the Bears stronger than any team in this division? I think outright... So me and you hate rankings, right? We, oh, yeah. Me and you personally hate power rankings. It's so opinionated and stuff like that. So we've said that if we ever do rankings of players, it comes down to one simple answer. Would you rather have this guy than this guy? And I think position-wise, there's the quarterback position in the NFC. There's not a single team that wouldn't prefer to have Justin Fields than their guy. So I guess if we're talking about the strengths of a team, I don't think the Vikings for a second. If you're trading Fields for Cousins straight up, Goff for Fields, and or Jordan Love for Fields, I don't think there's a single team in the division that says no. Very fair. I have to agree with you 100%, um, which is crazy. (laughs) Which is kind of crazy. Bears might have the best quarterback in the NFC North. The last time you heard that. Yeah. You know? Wide receiver-wise, um... Definitely I mean, the Vikings are Justin stronger. Justin Jefferson, yeah, that, that Vikings guy's are stronger. Stud. At running back, I would say. Well, hold on. Lions. Who else is stronger? Or, or do the Packers have a better wide receiver core? Do the Lions have a better wide receiver core? I think the Lions might with Amon Ross St. Brown. The Lions might. And then Jameson Williams. Well, he's suspended, but. What about Christian Watson and the Packers? That's where it's a toss up depending on how this year goes, but I would, I would take DJ Moore. Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool over those guys. Yep. Okay. They might have the Packers might have the fourth best. Okay. Tight ends. Uh, TJ Hawkinson probably wins by himself. He got paid a ridiculous amount of money. He better earn it. Um, the Packers, debatably, they just drafted two tight ends and you know they're young and hopefully they work out. But usually tight ends don't work out in the first year. And then. Uh, I honestly don't know who the Lions' tight end is because they traded T.J. Hawkinson. So uh, I'm going to say the Bears probably have the second best tight end core in the uh, NFC North. Okay, second or third, depending on how the Packers do, right? Robert Robert Tunyon would be starting on two of the four teams. That's true. That's true. Okay. Um, yeah. What about the general offensive line? Offensive line, I think Detroit's definitely the best. If everybody's healthy, I say Green Bay is the second best. The Vikings notoriously are bad, but middle middle bad. And then the Bears right now is a toss-up. So I would say they're the worst offensive line in the NFC by reputation. NFC North. NFC North. Yes, by, by reputation. reputation. By reputation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, we could go through the defensive positions. We could just say defense as a whole. Who's... <laughs> Who do you think is the best defense in the NFC North? Ooh. Wow, there's so much moving parts. So I can't possibly say the Bears is the number one. No. That's that's not possible. No, we were I would about say, to pack that sure. Right. I would say Lions, number one. Packers, two. And then the Vikings were very, very bad on defense as well last year. And I think they only got worse. So I'm going to take Bears at three, Vikings at four. Did anything that you've seen in the preseason 
And while the preseason is always the preseason, let's not get mixed up about that. Is there anything you saw in the preseason that made you feel better, worse, or the same going into training camp? I feel better about the depth of this team. I do feel that, you know, uh, when it comes to the second set of guys, uh, that we're actually better off than we were last year. Uh, however, I, I don't take away much from, from the preseason as far as team expectations for the starters and things like that. It's kind of just so vanilla. You're out there just kind of tossing the ball around. Just I don't think that there is true expectations for, you know, the first team guys to go out there and actually have to do well and things like that. You were talking about it before the first preseason game. No matter what Justin Fields goes out there and does, your opinion about him doesn't really change. You know, he went out there and threw for two touchdowns and three passes, and, you know, a lot of people got high about it. I'm with you. My opinion didn't really change. It's whatever. It's preseason. Like, I do want them to come out ready to go, ready to play in game one, though. I think that's that's where I'll have more of an uh, opinion on how I feel, you know, if I feel better or worse or whatever about this season. I think I need to see game one in order to be able to answer that question truthfully and honestly. This sounds so cheesy, but... I think, like, based on, and I've said this since the moment Matt Eberflus was hired. And this is my biggest issue with Matt Eberflus. He preaches a lot of, like, rah rah type stuff, right? The hits principle and hustle to the ball. And that's, it, it's good old school coaching when it works. But when it doesn't work, it's bad. And guys really, they don't buy in, they, they sell out really quickly. And this, this is one of my rah-rah belief moments. I think, I think, I think if, if it's working, you need to see an incredibly energetic, hyped up team week one. You need to see a team that like, regardless of whether they win or lose, they're flying to the ball on defense. They're absolutely just mauling people on the offensive line and every block on the receivers is just engaged in effort and all that stuff if you see any lethargic play if you see any lazy play or little moments of just like mental errors in week one i think that might be a wrap on the season not a wrap in the sense that the season's over but i mean the the clock on matt eberflus for me starts ticking if people aren't buying into the hard effort plays by even week one, like what more do you need? It's week one against the Packers at home in year two of the rebuild. This should be the most hard played game the Bears have played in five years. 